Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a trying new makeup video. I just have a bunch of makeup I want to demo for you guys. Some of these products I've used and I can give you a mini review and I'm loving and then some of them are brand new to me. I haven't swatched them, uh, just got them in PR. So if you're new here, I would love for you to subscribe. I do a ton of trying new makeup, first impressions, lots of the new, new, new Sephora hauls. I'm a Sephora queen, if I do say so myself. And just lots and lots of reviews, beauty, favorites, hauls, all of it. So today I want to be using the new, or I want to be using, that sounded really weird. I'm going to use the new Too Faced Born This Way Matte. This is brand new. They sent this to me in PR. They sent me one shade, which will hopefully work for me. I also have this from Sephora. I made a Sephora order and I added this to cart. This is the Kosas, uh, what is this even called? Seamless Wear, no, no, that's not what it's called. Kosas Revealer, Super Creamy Brightening Concealer. So this is not brand new, but honestly, if there's something that I don't really wanna buy myself, um, I'm not gonna buy like 75 concealers unless you guys highly request it. I didn't get a ton of requests, but I thought when I saw this on Sephora to add as a sample, we might as well try it. So I have this to try. Also have the new Nabla Bronzers. Wow, gorgeous. We're gonna use those as well as the Patrick Ta my love for these, I cannot say. These are the new cream powder duo blushes. I have three shades, so we'll kind of play around. I also have the new Hourglass Unlocked Mascara. I have the new M Cosmetics Lip Liners. Oh, the big daddy that I totally forgot about is this Pat McGrath palette. I picked this up. Uh, you guys had requested it. I'm so sorry I'm late. Honestly, my life was in shambles there for a bit, so I'm just getting back to feeling like me very, very slowly. So this has been kind of just sitting here, but I definitely want to do a look with this. So I also have the Glow Coco Hydrating Mist from Huda Beauty. I did demo this on my Instagram with my husband just as a joke to see what the scent was like. And I have some thoughts on this. If you know about the first one and how like heavily perfumed it was, this will be interesting to try. So that's most of the products I want to feature today. Definitely going to wing it with the lips. I have a bunch of new lip products always. So whatever is going to work with the look will go with. And that's it. So hopefully you'll subscribe, hit the bell down below, give me a thumbs up and let's go ahead and begin. So the first thing I'm actually going to do is put on some lip balm. Oh my gosh. I love this lip balm. I mentioned it on Instagram. I don't know. Oh, I hauled it and I did talk about it. Uh, they sent me the first one and then I repurchased. This is the Too Faced Hangover RX Pillow Bomb and it is what dreams are made of. I just adore it. I've been raving about it. Mm. It just feels, honestly, I don't know, like heaven <laughs> on dry lips. I really like it. It has like a menthol kind of feel, but it just has a nice slip to it. It doesn't have a weird taste or anything like that. So I use this every night before bed and then I picked up one um, for up here. For primer, I'm gonna go in with my Dominique Cosmetics JD Weighty Primer. I really like this. It has a nice uh, cucumber scent. Doesn't have smoothing properties, but it does have like a nice hydration without being gunky or heavy. So I'm just going to go ahead and use this all over. You can see I have breakout scars. I'm currently working with Curology, not like sponsored or anything. I actually am a paying customer. I have been for a while. I've been struggling with acne. I can't figure out if it's stress, anxiety, if it's just hormonal because I'm 32. I've heard a lot of people kind of start breaking out in their early 30s, so it could be that. I have spoken to my rep or my, they have like a dermatologist that gives you like a medication specific to you, so I sent her updated photos of all my acne. And she told me to stop using like everything in terms of like BHA, retinol, vitamin C, any of that, and just use the Curology. And then she's kind of adjusting my uh, ingredients. And I should get that in a couple weeks. So as of right now, I'm literally doing moisturizer, SPF, just the basics. I'm not doing, you know, any masks or spot treatments. If I have a zit, I use a hydrocolloid, hydrocolloid, how do you say that? Hydrocolloid patch. I don't know. I have the ones that I really like. I know my face is fucked up. I mean, what can you say? I'm just feeling great lately. Do you feel like in quarantine, some people are thriving and I am just not. I have never really had acne like this. Like I've had some, I'm used to having like one or two under the skin cystic acne. That's not something new for me, but having multiples, something's going on like with my diet or something. So I'm just kind of trying to figure out what is it? I was taking melatonin to kind of go to sleep easier and I think that was triggering it too. So I stopped that about six days ago. 
So I feel like things are calming down. So it's just interesting how, I don't know, my whole life I've just had one or two acne spots and then all of a sudden my skin just kind of went crazy and I don't want to get on like Accutane or I don't know what the other one's called, Spira, Spira something. I don't know. A year ago, a derm told me to do that, but I don't want to get blood work and just add on medication, you know, just for acne. I'd like to try to treat it by just not using a bunch. So I was going to tell you guys, I'm on a spiel because I haven't been on here for a while. Two things. I was going to review this Ilia Super Serum Skin Tint SPF 40. I used this one day and it was itching my skin immediately, so I just do not feel comfortable reviewing it. I can tell you the coverage was really light, but buildable. I felt like it was enough to like put it on and then do a spot conceal. Definitely more than like a Glossier skin tint kind of situation, and I feel like I liked the ease of it. Kind of reminded me of the Kosas Tinted Oil, but it itched my skin, and just with everything going on, I was like, I'm not even going to go there. So that's my thoughts on this. I'm sorry I couldn't review it, but I just, I don't know. It was like irritating and itching and kind of burning my skin. The second thing I wanted to tell you is that my background is hopefully less bright. I had a few comments that my last couple of videos were super bright and it was hurting your eyes, just the really bright lights. So I turned them all the way down and then just added a couple things in the back to just kind of make it like more calm and not as bright in your face. So definitely let me know if you ever notice anything about my lighting, if it bothers you or something, just totally let me know and I'll try to tweak it. So I'm gonna go in with this Born This Way 24 hour undetectable super long wear foundation from Too Faced. Their concealer, this is like one of my favorites, the Born This Way one, the sculpting. So they sent me the shade Vanilla in this foundation and I think it'll be fine. I'm gonna go in I'm going to use a sponge on half of my face and just see what kind of coverage does it say on here? Oil-free, oil-controlling, waterproof, transfer-resistant. So coverage looks like medium off the bat. Shade's a little light for my tan, but that's okay. I'm going to go ahead and use my It Cosmetics brush on the other side just to compare application methods. Oh my god, I had a gnarly zit down there. I have to probably spot conceal because I just have a lot of breakout breakouts that are healing. Acne is no joke. If you've never dealt with it, thank your lucky stars because I really never dealt with it like seriously until now and I can tell you it it hurts your confidence. Just I find myself just kind of like just not feeling great about myself, which is not good. And it hurts too, I think that's another thing. It's very painful. So when you are when you have active breakouts, it hurts. Some of them, like this one hurts so bad. So here's what the foundation looks like. I feel like it looks really nice. Sometimes when I'm filming, I have my mirror backed up so it's not in front of my mic and then I can't really see. Looking in the mirror though, this looks really, really nice to me. I mean, it has a good medium buildable to full coverage. Again, it's a thin formula, so it's not thick and gunking up. It doesn't feel like it's going to slide off. So we'll see how it wears. I'll leave a pinned comment. But so far, so good. I feel like it covered what I needed to cover. I don't think I'm going to have to spot conceal even, spot conceal even, uh, because it just built up nicely. So I'm going to go in next with the Kosas. This is the Revealer Super Creamy and Brightening Concealer. Medium to full coverage concealer, creamy brightening formula. So a lot of people said this ran really yellow. In this sample, I have a 3.5 and an 01. So maybe I'll just look at the 3.5 and kind of see where we're at. This is a fair light neutral, so I would say that would work. So this is what the color looks like. So I'm just gonna kind of apply it. So I'm actually going to make sure I get right up in here. I probably used too much, good job. Wow, I don't know the coverage on this, but I feel like it's gonna be a little heavy. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my Beauty Blender to blend out. One thing I'm noticing is it feels quite hydrating. That is quite yellow though. And that was the complaint that I uh, saw a lot of people mentioning. They just couldn't find a shade that worked for them. I almost wonder if they have cool shades, if they would still be yellow. This is pretty yellow and it's neutral, which is kind of strange because it can almost give you that like, sickly look if your under eyes are like almost green yellow which i can see like it almost darkened my under eyes hmm. maybe i'll 
have to go in with like a brightening powder. The feel of it feels nice. It feels hydrating. That's what I'm noticing. Nice and blendable. I, I would say the coverage is medium. I mean, it feels like a good coverage. It's just, to me, it just looks a little dark and yellow around my eyes now, which is not my favorite look. So I'm gonna go ahead and set with my Huda Beauty Pound Cake, and I'm gonna set heavily under my eyes, hopefully to really brighten up, just so everything kind of meshes together. But that's interesting that everything leans super, super yellow. Other than that, I really feel like the formula feels nice. If you have dry under eyes, Kind of stamp it in and pull it down in the pore area. I'm gonna go heavier now. So what have you guys been watching on Netflix? Or Hulu or whatever. Uh, I've been watching Selling Sunset, which is like super easy watching. Those episodes are like 30 minutes long. It's like really, it's like a Bravo show. But it's like about real estate and super rich people in LA and I'm just like, wow. Like the houses out there are so expensive. <laughs> They're so pretty. So it's just interesting. They, they kind of focus on the drama a little bit, kind of like a Bravo like housewife show, but I don't really care about that. I just like to see the houses and how much they are, how much they sell for, how some houses are harder to sell and some are easier it's just interesting to learn about like the high-end real estate so this is what the complexion looks like set it looks a little bit powdery to me but I did go heavy with the powder and once we kind of um, add bronzer and blush and all of that I feel like it'll come back to life my face looks smooth it definitely looks matte um, so I'm pretty happy with it so far I do feel like I just look a little dark around the eyes which that was the shade Fair Light Neutral, and I have a decent tan right now, so I feel like definitely the shade range needs some help there. So I'm gonna go ahead and do my brows off camera, and then we'll start using the Pat McGrath palette on the eyes. So I went ahead and did my brows. I did a little bit more of a structured brow. Who knows, we're just, you know, makeup is fun, you can wash it off. So I have this Pat McGrath palette that I wanna use today. This is the, I think it's Divine Rose 2. It's very confusing, she has so many different palettes. So I've only swatched this, but I haven't actually used it. And I want to do a really pretty look. So I'm gonna go in with this peachy shade to start. I'm gonna go ahead and use this. Oh, it's darker on the eye than I thought, which isn't bad. It's just got a little bit more punch than I was anticipating, but it's blending beautifully. I actually really like this brush. Remember when Kylie came out with her brushes and it was like $700 for the set and everybody was like, no. I did buy this one in number 15, and I really like it for blowing out colors in your crease. So I'm gonna go into the deeper shade here. There's only a couple mattes in this palette, so you kind of have to use them to create your looks. Well, you know, you're gonna use this to deepen it up. I'm using a Refer 15. I'm gonna keep this low. So apply it and then use that first brush to really blend it out. So this purple shade isn't my favorite. I feel like it's clinging a little bit, which is not something I usually deal with, but I'm trying to just make sure I have a cohesive blend. I didn't notice that with the peach. Hmm, do you guys see that patchiness, that skipping? That is not... Great, and I'm not sure how we're going to fix that. So I'm gonna just go in with a blank brush and really blend that out. All right, so that's as good as I can get it. That's interesting that I have that patching for this price of a palette. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and go for the purple. This is like a trichrome. So it goes from like pink to purple to green. So we're gonna go ahead and try this on the lid. Yeah, this is what you're paying for, to be honest, in this palette, particularly the shimmers. So I think this is pretty, but 
I don't know, 100 and some dollars pretty. We'll have to see how the look comes out. So I'm gonna go in with this Cupid's Arrow Stylo. This is from Nabla. These are really interesting. I think they have four shades now. This is something you can use on your lips, your eyes, really anywhere. So I'm actually gonna put this on a brush and then smudge out my top lash line and it works really well. And I have issues a lot of times with products like this. They just skip, grab. I have a hard time manipulating them, but I found that if I use this, I'm using just this tiny lash line smudger from Nobble. You could use any brush like this. And I'm just going to directly take my brush onto the crayon. And you don't need a lot. I just kind of take a tiny bit off here, and then I'm just going to smudge my upper lash line. So you can see it's really a subtle difference, but it really will kind of give me groundwork for lashes. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the other eye, and then I wanna try out the new Hourglass Mascara. So now I wanna go in with mascara. This is the new Hourglass Unlocked Insta Instant... <laughs> So now I wanna go into mascara. This is the Hourglass Unlocked Instant Extensions Mascara. And this has one of those kind of um, rubber applicators, very thin. I have a feeling this is gonna give me length more so than volume. So I already curled my lashes. I'm gonna go ahead and apply this. Obviously I wanna go in with falsies after this, but so it's definitely one of those, this just kind of pricks your eye. It's giving me some length though. Yeah, I can definitely feel it like right on my lid. But it's not bad. I just have really sad lashes. I definitely have other ones that I prefer, but it's honestly not bad. It did give me some length. I just have really, really, really small lashes that not many mascaras actually do much for me, but it's okay. So I went ahead and threw on some lashes. They're just some that were already around. I think they're from Lashaholics, but I wanted to use this on camera. I purchased this and I never demoed it. I'm not a huge fan of it. I got the shade medium and I just feel like it's a little bit cool. I don't like hate it, but I don't love it. I don't feel like it gives me the right warmth. So I thought I would use this kind of to shape the face out a little bit more of like a contour shading powder and then go in with the Nabla to bring in more radiance. Like I said, I don't, I don't, hate this powder but I just don't something about the color it doesn't get patchy or anything weird but I just don't love the color on me something is just weird with the color on this I just don't feel bronzed or I don't know I just whenever I wear this I just don't honestly I don't feel pretty I'm just like mm. I know a lot of people got the shade tan but I'm not gonna buy another one of these because I'm just like not that into it. So this is what it looks like. To me, something's off with the shade just in terms of what I look for in a bronzer. I just don't love the shade on me. I'm gonna go in with my Nabla. I love these. These are the Skin Bronzing Sun Kissed Effect Bronzing Powder. These are at Ulta now, and I'm gonna go in with the shade Dune, which is more warm. These look dark, but they're very like glowy and pretty. I have been loving these. So because they're pretty you know, forgiving, you can kind of really put your brush in. And they have a nice radiance to them, but it, there's no chunky glitter. It's such a thin formula, like no powder kick up comes up. I just really, really enjoy these. And I feel like because these are so buildable, you really can't go overboard because you really like build these up. So if you're a beginner and you just want a little bit of a sun-kissed glow, highly, highly recommend these. So for blush, I wanna go in with the Patrick Ta. These are the new Double Take Cream. I just spit. These are the new Double Take Cream and Powder Blushes. I'm gonna use the shade Do We Know Her today, which is like the peachy coral. The shade She's So LA, which is the bronze one, is absolutely incredible for bronzer, all over your nose. It's just beautiful for blush. But I wanna use this one because I feel like it will go better with the look that we're doing today. So I'm gonna start off with the powder. He actually recommends to do it this way. Start with the powder, and these are more pigmented than his original powder blushes, if you had those. Those are really buildable, but this is pretty pigmented. What is going on with this brush? Pretty pigmented right away. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply this. 
kind of high up on the cheekbone. I'm gonna take a little bit over the nose. And he actually recommends taking the cream second. So it does have a little cover on it, which I think is really nice to keep them separate. He takes the cream after the powder to really bring life back into the skin. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply. And you can see it really punches this color up. Wow, it's so pretty. So I just take it on the back of the sponge and then make sure I tap it off on the back of my hand. Oh, it is so pretty. I'm, I'm really heavy with blush, but I always have been. And take it over, oh my gosh. It's gorgeous. I can't say enough good things. Please run to get these. I will link them down below. They're kind of in and out of stock, so hopefully they're back, but this shade and then also the She's So LA is so pretty for an everyday look. I just cannot recommend these enough. So I wanna start on the lower lash line. I'm gonna take, again, that Nabla pencil and I'm gonna run it and then immediately blend it out with a really small pencil to have a base. So almost something like this. It's so creamy, but it just blends pretty easily. And then it sets and you're like good for the whole day. These are incredible formula. I've had so many eyeliners that just will not blend and it's such a pain in the ass when they start skipping, grabbing onto powder, grabbing onto shadow. Look how different my eyes look. Okay, so I'm gonna do this on the other side. So for the lower lash line, I think I'm actually gonna go into this kind of shimmery shade. And I'm gonna start working this. I did wet my brush a little bit. Really gonna blend this lower. And then I'm also gonna take that Nabla into my waterline. Which I don't usually do, but Okay, so for the inner corner, I'm gonna mix this kind of peachy pink and then this really light kind of champagne. Take a little bit on the brow bone. So for highlight, I have this Diamond Dasher from Kaleido's Makeup, and this is number four Space Age. This is one of their highlights, and it's a pinky shift, so it'll probably go good with this. I'm just gonna use this dry. It's very intense, so I just wanna build. Yeah, like just a couple little swipes. I'm gonna try to like marry it up here with my brow bone. So I went ahead and curled my hair off camera. I'm gonna go in with the lips and I'm gonna use this Mink from M Cosmetics. This is the deepest shade that they offer in lip liners. They just came out with five shades. I wish there would have been more deeper shades. This reminds me of Melt Foxy, which is like a cool tone brown or um, Iconic Nude from Charlotte Tilbury, so it's my favorite. So the formula on these is definitely not as dry as uh, Melt or Iconic London. Those are pencils, this is a twist up and they usually are a little bit creamier, a little bit more slip. So for lipstick, I think I'm gonna go in with this Patrick Ta, oh, she's single, which I purchased from Sephora, which is the nude shade. Just because I feel like our eyes are the kind of center of this look. And then I wanna go in with this new Nabla Cosmetics. This is in District, which is a really, really kind of neutral brown nude. Mm, that smells good, it smells like coconut. And then to finish off, I wanna go in with this Huda Beauty Glow Cocoa Hydrating Mist. So I've sprayed this on Ian and then I've sprayed it on myself and it definitely has a scent, but it's nowhere near as heavy as her first setting spray that was kind of like um, hairspray, like a drag kind of setting spray or that's what inspired that spray. This is more of a hydrating instead of like a locking your makeup in, but this has a coconut scent, but it's 
lighter. Like I can deal with this. It's not irritating. The other one, one spray and I felt like I was choking. This one, I don't feel that. So let's go ahead and, ooh, good mister. I haven't used this in a while. Yeah, it has a light kind of, maybe it's not coconut, coconut, coconut floral. Let's just go ahead. It smells nice, like I'm okay with that one. So I wiped off a little bit of that gloss because I wanna actually add this. I think I need a little bit more of like a pinky vibe to go with the highlight, the blush, the purple on the eyes. This is the Lorac Lux Lip Gloss in Vibes, which is a light baby pink. I just feel like I wanna tie in kind of the cheeks Yeah, I like that better. Just so it ties in with the pink that I have going on. All right, guys, so here's my finished makeup look, and I wanna go over the products. Starting off with the Dominique JD Weighty Primer. I told you guys previously I like this. It has a nice cucumber scent. It doesn't irritate. It gives a nice kind of just hydration to the skin. It's not super dewy. There's no chunks of glitter, but it does feel nice and slick on the skin without feeling silicone-y, so I do really like this. And honestly, I really like this Born This Way uh, Matte Undetectable Super Longwear Foundation. It's nice and thin. It's not accentuating my texture. Good coverage. And if it's long wear, I typically like foundations like that, especially like double wear or the dose of color, something like that. So I'm excited to keep trying this. I have the shade Vanilla, but this is brand new and it's something that I would reach for again. I feel like my skin looks pretty smooth, which is what I look for. The Kosas Concealer, I actually like it. I feel like it looks pretty nice on my under eyes and I liked how hydrating it was. Good coverage, it blended beautifully. But the shade that I had, which was neutral, still was yellow and that's what I keep seeing. So I'll maybe look for swatches, see if maybe I can find a shade that is cool that will really actually be neutral. But I like this, I just think the shade range from what everybody else has said, I do agree that it does look yellow, almost leaning green. So in terms of the Pat McGrath palette, I think you're literally gonna buy this for the shimmers, in my opinion. Obviously, again, as I said, there's only two mattes in here. What really drew me in was these four shimmers, so I can't be surprised. Uh, this shade got patchy, which I didn't really expect, but overall, I feel like I got a pretty look. I mean, I only used a couple of the shimmers just because I did something quite simple, but I really wanna use that yellow gold. Uh, this is the one I used on my lid. Even this like really pink one, this definitely comes off darker on the lid. It looks like kind of like a pink in the pan, but it's really that like shifty green, purple, pink, so I do like this, but I don't think that you need a Pat McGrath palette. If you like to splurge, I mean, these things are heavy and they feel very luxe, and some of the shimmers are just incredibly beautiful, but you can get it done with ColourPop or you know tons of other brands. So like it, don't love it. In terms of the Charlotte Tilbury, I just don't love the color on this. It's fine, but something about the color just doesn't gel with me. It blends fine and I don't notice any patchiness but I just don't like the color. Every time I've tried it on, and I think it's been maybe five times now, I just feel unfinished or like something's off. So I'm not gonna buy another one because they're expensive. So it's just kind of like a flop for me personally. Uh, the Nabla, I adore. These are so beautiful. So I have Ombra, which is a little bit lighter, I wanna say, maybe a little bit more red. And then Dune, yeah, Dune is more warm and darker. These are phenomenal, incredible. I just adore these so much. I will link them down below. I absolutely adore the Patrick Ta blushes. I cannot tell you how much I love She's LA or She's So LA, which is like the bronzy one. And then this one, which is called Do We Know Her. I feel like it just livened up my entire face. If you're a blush fanatic, oh my God, these are incredible, incredible, incredible. So I'll link them down below. The um, Dasher, what is this called? Diamond Dasher Highlight. I like this, but it's a little bit pink and a little bit glittery for every day. It's kind of like one of those inner corners or with a look like this, but every day it's a little bit intense, so it's okay. The Nabla, oh my God, this is incredible. The black kind of arrow pen, they're called Cupid's Arrow Stylos, so you can use them multi-use. If you have issues blending, um, smudging liner, but you want to, I'm telling you these are insane. They're the easiest to use that I've ever tried. And I think they have like a red, orange, or like, I'm sorry, like a maroon, a brown, 
a light color in the black, so I'll link this as well. It's so easy. The Hourglass Mascara is just an okay for me. I don't dislike it, but I'm not like wowed. I feel like it's not going to replace my favorites. It's decent in terms of giving me length and it feels really nice and luxe, but I really need all the help I can get, so I don't think that it'll become a favorite for me. So the M Cosmetics Soft Blur Velvet Lip Liners are really nice. I don't know if I like them more than like my Charlotte Tilbury or my Melt, just because I like to have a little bit more control. This isn't as slippy as like a ColourPop where it just goes, but it's kind of in the middle, so it feels nice and I think the whole point of it is that, you know, you can do the blurred, yeah, you can do like the blurred edges, because they have more of an editorial look, M Cosmetics does, so you can really blur in the corners of your mouth or just do kind of like that blotted lip look. So I would recommend the shade Mink, which is what I use today, just because it's the deepest and I feel like the most um, universal to really outline your lips. I wish they would have came out with more deep colors. A lot of them are very, very light. So this is my favorite pick of the bunch. The Patrick Ta lipstick, I do like it, but something about the shade just doesn't wow me. I think it's a nice formula, but I'm much more into the blushes. So I think it's an okay nude, but I have so many nude glosses. It's not standing out to me. And this Nabla gloss is really pretty. This is the gloss that's in the shade District. It didn't go with my look today, but it's a unique color. Very like grungy color and high shine smells like, I want to say like coconut or something. And then I really like these glosses from Lorac. Uh, this is the one I use the most, which is that really shiny pink. So I really like this in the shade Vibes. It just gave me a little bit of a pink hue to kind of tie in the rest of my makeup. And then lastly, the Huda Beauty Glow Cocoa Hydrating Mist. I love the scent on it. It is very summery and it's not overpowering. It's definitely there, but it's very similar to other brands. So you're not going to be like choking like her first spray. It does leave a little bit of a tack to the skin, which I just noticed. My skin definitely gives you like a hydration but I feel a little bit of almost like a glycerin tack so if you don't like that I don't know if you would like it because I can definitely feel it more so than some of my other favorites but I do like it I think it's a nice you know hydrating spray I, again I don't know if it's going to replace like my Farsali or something but it does the job that it says it's going to do so that is everything for this trying new makeup I hope you guys enjoyed this video and saw some products that you were eyeing let me know what products you want me to review next. Please subscribe if you're new and stay a while. I'll have everything linked down below as I usually do. Thank you guys again so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.